What's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hey girl, hey. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time your girl uploads. We are almost at 10K. I would really love if we could hit that by the end of May, early June. So yeah, make sure y'all share my videos and help me out. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Hair Life. So yeah, you guys, I'm gonna show you how to do a wig in under an hour. This is the quickest way if you don't have time, if you don't know how to sew, whatever the case may be. I got you, sis, I got you, don't worry. We are gonna get this wig slayed, okay? Okay, so this bomb deep wave hair that I'm wearing is from wirewigs.com. Thank you guys so much for sending me this hair. I know that I have purchased their company with my own money before, so I really, really love this company. They're super affordable and they have really great quality hair. So yeah, let's get into this video, y'all, because I'm, I'm honestly really excited, so let's get okay, into it. Okay, guys, so this is the original texture of the hair. This is their Peruvian deep wave. I have three 12-inch bundles. And I was just showing you guys, I was running my fingers through there with ease. It was not snagging at all, and it did not shed. It still has not shed on me. I've co-washed it and everything, cut it, and it still has not shed. So that's really, really good. And you guys can see the bundle size is nice and full. So here's the frontal. It was straight a bit at the roots, but that was fine. It came together really nicely, and it bleached beautifully. I recently got a question on one of my older videos on how to protect your canvas head. So what I did was just took some scotch tape and put it on here. This works way better than using a plastic cap. So just take some scotch tape and I just put it around the back and the top of the head because y'all know when you use a plastic cap, it gets stuck up under there and then when you scratch your head, it sounds like that over there. And that's not cute. So I'm using my 21 inch head I already T-pinned my frontal down and I'm going to insert exactly how to get this perfect every single time. So I'm going to insert that right now. Conference of your head and mine is 21 inches as you guys can see. The next measurement is ear to ear and mine is 11 inches. There's two different ways you can do this. The first way you can measure out your frontal and as I just told you guys my ear to ear is 11 inches. So I will place my measuring tape in the middle of the frontal. And I'm gonna show you guys the 11 inches. So there's the 11 inches and I will cut off the access. But since your frontal stretches, I would do 10 and a half instead of 11 because it does stretch when you place it on the cap. So you just cut those edges off. Now the second way I got this from Sophiology and this tip is so bomb y'all. Like my frontals fits perfectly doing this. So you wanna place the cap on your head and I just braided my frontal up to get the hair out of the way. So you're gonna align your frontal on your head and the cap on how you would want it, like when you put it on. So what you're gonna do is take a white pencil. I just have a white little eyeliner that was a dollar at the beauty supply store. And you're going to mark the areas on like behind your ear on both sides and then in the middle of the cap where it stops so you know exactly where to sew it. Okay, so y'all see where my dots are on my cap. And let me show y'all how bomb this trick is. So I told you guys to go to 10 and a half because the frontal stretches, right? So check this out. I'm gonna put my measuring tape on there. Look where those dots line up on my measuring tape. 10 and a half, sis. Like this trick is foolproof. Like your frontals are gonna lay on your head perfectly. 10 and a half. Y'all see that? Y'all see it? Okay, yeah. Now I'm going to take my frontal and line it up to the markings that we made. So the front part of your frontal is going to look weird. It's not going to be sitting flat down on the cap or anything. That's what it's supposed to look like. As long as that back part is flat down, you are good. I see people go. saying they're having a hard time sticking their T-pins into their canvas head. Oh, yeah. The two T-pins I have right here. This is the oh, tip. T-pin. And then here is the one that I always use. You can see the one on the right has a larger tip than the one on the left and that's probably why because this one this one right here 
this one right here is a lot thicker than this one right there so i went ahead and threaded one needle because it's all you're gonna need for this so you guys will see that i have this flap hanging down and that is because this part will be over my ear and i'm gonna just go ahead and cut that when i'm done then i'm pretty sure that y'all have heard plenty of times this right here that is me just grabbing the top part of the cap like that you're going through the whole thing and I'm gonna pull that needle through so now I'm at the end and y'all can see that little knot I'm gonna go ahead and stick my needle through that thread like so and pull and I do the loop and pull method so I'm just gonna make sure that my thread is always in front of me and y'all excuse my voice I'm getting over a cold so I'm just going to continue to do the loop and pull method all across the back of my frontal if you want a more in-depth tutorial I will link the two that I already have on my channel down below and I will also put them in the eye so you guys can check that out if you need more detail These two lines that I'm showing you guys are also elastic bands and you do not want to sew on those or your cap will not stretch. I, this hair is co-washed. I previously showed you guys a clip of the hair um, before I co-washed it. So this is what the hair looks like. And this is their Peruvian Deep Wave. It's really, really pretty. And it's really soft. So here is a test piece. I put a little bit of bleach on here. I only left it on for 10 minutes. So that goes to show you guys how fast the hair turns. And it still has a curl pattern. So if you guys do want to color the hair, you know that you can. So these pins that you guys see, I folded my cap down a little bit because it's a little bit too big for my head. So yeah. Okay, so I have my mini hot glue gun and some extra sticks on deck. You guys can get this from Walmart for like three to five dollars. So all I'm gonna do is place the glue in a line and you wanna do this in sections and then you wanna just place the track in. Now I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do the fold over method. Um, because I know a lot of people do not like to cut their webs. You have to cut them at the top, but the majority of the wig will be the fold over. So you're just going to keep gluing in a line and pressing the track in. I was using my nails and I also did use a rat tail comb to make sure that the track is secure. So for the fold over method, you are going to place a little bit of glue on top of the track that you previously glued down and then you're going to fold that track over the opposite way and really press it down, like press it in really, really good and as flat as you can possibly get it so it will not be lumpy and bumpy because that is not the look we're going for. We want it to be nice, flat and seamless. And then after you do that, you're just going to put some more glue in a line and, and press that track in. It's very repetitive. That's all I'm doing, you guys. So you guys will see me do the fold over method plenty of times. You just want to fold it down and press it in really good so that it's nice and flat. It's really, really simple. So if you do not want to cut a lot of your tracks, this is what you can do. And I'm not placing my tracks too close together because you don't want them to be too stacked and don't have any room in between. If you get glue in the hair, just wait for it to dry and then you can just pull it right off. And I know somebody's probably gonna ask, can you wash your wigs with this method? And yes, you can. Just try not to get a bunch of water um, at the base of the tracks because eventually you will have to repair a few tracks. But besides that, this method is really durable so you shouldn't have to worry about any tracks falling out at
So you're just gonna keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you create a U shape. So you guys can pretty much see that U shape that I was talking about. So this is gonna be the last track. Do the fold over method too, and we're gonna cut the end of this track. So we're not going to continue going in that U shape. We're going straight across until we reach the back of the frontal. So to close the wig off, you're just gonna glue that last track right to the back of the frontal. And to cover up that glue residue, we are gonna be using a Sharpie marker. I know they do have black glue sticks, so I'll be using those the next time. But in the meantime, girl, just grab you a Sharpie marker and color over the glue. So I'm showing you guys the inside of the wig. There is no tape or anything on the wig. So y'all use tape, and not a plastic bag, and get your whole life. So we're just gonna flip that cap from up under the frontal area and we're just gonna cut and you can use that access piece as an elastic band instead of using the ones that you can buy from the fabric store it's much safer for your hair and it won't pull your hair out or anything so you can just use that all right y'all so stay tuned for part two and three on how i got the wig to look like scalp and how i cut this curly bob can't do drip, drip, drip. can't do drip, drip, drip. can't do drip, drip, drip. Diamonds on my wrist, they dripping. Ice.